Welcome to Chemistry at Hanunika High School. I'm Brian Brown, and today we'll be looking at naming our next type of substance, which is acids. So we've already talked about elemental substances. We've already talked about molecules, and really it was binary molecules. Today we're going to look at another type of molecular substance, really molecular acids. So how can you tell when your compound's an acid? Well, here is a formula for an acid. This is sulfuric acid, which is in our batteries inside our cars. It could be an acid, it could be an ionic, I'm sorry, it could be a molecule, it could be an ionic compound, it could be an acid. These are our different types of compounds. How do we know when we look at H2SO4 that it is an acid? So what are the clues when we're looking at an acid? Because we have clues for ionic compounds that starts with a metal or ammonium. It's got cations and anions, it's going to be an ionic compound. We've got clues for molecules. If we had two nonmetals, that was our dead giveaway that it was a molecule. If we only had one element, that's a dead giveaway. It's an elemental substance. So all these different things, we have clues as to which type of thing it is. So there's got to be a clue for an acid as well. Well, what's an acid? Certain molecules, when dissolved in water, and remember the name for that is aqueous. So anything that once it becomes dissolved in water, we call it aqueous. So table salt dissolved in water would be aqueous table salt or sodium chloride. Well, some things, when you dissolve in water, they make the water acidic. Those types of substances are what we call acids. Now, while that's true, and that is a definition, so to speak, of what an acid is, doesn't really help us know that H2SO4 is an acid. So what is it about acids and their formulas that really tells us an a that something is an acid? Well, acids all have ionizable hydrogen. That's why they make the water acidic, is because they're donating a hydrogen ion, an H plus ion, to water. So our dead giveaway that we're talking about a molecular acid is that it's going to start with the element hydrogen, because that's how we clue somebody in that it has ionizable hydrogen. So in H2SO4, notice it starts with a hydrogen. So that's going to be our clue that we have a molecular acid. Now, after the hydrogen, they're going to contain some kind of anion. So when you look at H2SO4, after our hydrogen, which is the thing that clues us in we've got an acid, we have SO4. Remember, that's the sulfate anion we looked at last chapter. So when we write formulas for acids, we're always going to tell somebody it's an acid by starting the formula with that ionizable hydrogen, the, that H. There is one exception, because we all know water is H2O, and we know water is neutral, not acidic. So remember... If it's not water and it starts with hydrogen, then the things that you're going to see in this upcoming test are going to be acids. It's always going to be hydrogen followed by some recognizable anion, and that's going to be a dead giveaway that it's an acid. So let's look at a list of some common acids. Notice every one of these is an H with some anion after it. So HCl, that's hydrochloric acid, a really common useful acid in the chemistry classroom. Nitric acid, HNO3, another type of very useful acid. Uh, fertilizers and explosives are typically made from nitric acid, so a very important chemical. Uh, acetic acid, well, this is vinegar. Dilute acetic acid is what vinegar is that we have at home. Carbonic acid, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, which is a common flavoring agent in lots of sodas, as well as pretty much anything you taste sour. No, look at the uh, ingredients, you'll see it contains phosphoric acid. And then nitrous acid, kind of like nitric acid, but a different anion. So here's a list of some common acids. Every single one of them starts with hydrogen. So that's what we're going to use to identify an acid. When we're looking at a formula, it's going to start with hydrogen. And if you're looking at the name, they all say acid in the name, which makes it exceedingly easy. Now, how do we go about naming these things? So where does hydrochloric or nitric acid come from or acetic acid? Well, they're based upon the anion that's in the acid. And if you look at the back of your periodic table, at our list of anions, you'll notice anions all end in one of three suffixes. They either have an "-ide", an "-ate", or an "-ite". And that's how we actually get the three different ways of naming acids. You'll notice many of them have "-ics". There's one that has a "-hydro and "-ic", and there's one that has an "-us", in its name. Three different types of situations for our acids. Well, that's because we have three different anion endings. So if we have an anion that ends in "-ide", like Cl, if you look it up in the back of the periodic table, that's chloride, Cl-. minus. So anything that ends in "-ide", is going to become a hydro-blank-ic acid. So we take the 
and I a name. We lop off the old ending id, and we make it ick, and then we put hydro at the beginning. So we're adding a prefix, and we're adding a new suffix at the end. So anything that's id off the back of the periodic table, all those are going to become hydro ick acids. Now, the next set is a whole bunch of ick acids. That's because every single one of those comes from an anion that ends in 8. Nitrate for HNO3. C2H3O2- minus is acetate. Carbonate, sulfate, phosphate. Every one of these had an anion that was 8. And every one of those becomes an ick acid. And then the bottom one here, we have our only one that ended in ite. NO2- minus is nitrite. So if you end in ite, as an anion, you become us as an acid. So this becomes nitrous acid, not nitric acid like HNO3 was. So that's really how all of these names come about. Now there are a couple of goofy things that happen here because there are two situations that you have to be aware of that we don't just take the old anion name and add a prefix or add a suffix. And that is these two right here. If you notice what's happening with these, Sulfuric acid. Well, SO4 is sulfate. So you would think sulfate, lop off the 8 and put ick, you would get sulfic acid. Well, it says sulfuric acid. And then the same thing for the bottom one. PO4 is phosphate. So you would lop off the old ending, get rid of the 8, and you would think phosphic, but it's phosphoric. So whenever you have a compound with S, or I should say an acid with the S, or an acid with the P, they actually played with their name a little bit. And I suspect this came from the name was a common use name before the naming system came about, so they stuck with it. So when you have sulfate, SO4, sulfite, SO3, or even just plain S, sulfide, in all of those situations, it's going to become sulfur, and then ick, or hydrosulfuric, or sulfurous acid. So you use sulfur with all of our S compounds. And the same thing happens here with our P compounds. Instead of phosphate, it should make phosphic, we have phosphor. So all P compounds are going to become phosphor. So like sulfur, phosphor, that's how they're named. So that's a slight, slight, slight difference. And that's not something that re should really trip you up. Because when you're doing a homework problem, if you had one of those and you wrote it using the applied rule, just change the 8 to an ick, I'd probably still give it to you anyway. It just wouldn't happen to match what the name really is. So that's really the only thing that is a little bit screwy with this, is compounds with S, they're sulfur as the base or root of the name of the acid. And compounds with P, phosphor in it, you use phosphor as the root. So you use their old element roots, basically, rather than what the anion was. But those are our three general rules for dealing with acids. So let's try a couple of names of acids here. So remember, the naming system is based on the anion. Ides become hydroic, ates become ick, and ites become us. So if we have H2SO3, we need to look up what the anion is that's after the H. So, so right back periodic table, remember you'll have the access to this on the test, you'll see SO3 is called sulfite. Ite becomes us. And this is that goofy one. Remember, sulfur compounds keep the name sulfur. So this actually becomes sulfurous acid, not sulfic acid. Or I should say sulfus acid. But if you wrote sulfus acid, I'd probably let it slide because you're applying the rule properly as you understand it. Now, the one thing we haven't really talked about is the formulas. But it makes sense if you think about what the charge of all formulas are, all compounds. So whether it's a molecule, whether it's an ionic compound, or whether it's an acid, all compounds are neutral in charge. So if we've got an anion that has some negative charge, to balance out that negative charge, we have to have a very specific number and amounts of positive charge to get it to neutral. So in the case of our acids and finding their formulas, the first thing you have to do is Think of what we talked about before, but an exact reverse. So if it was a hydro ick, I know it came from an ide. If it was an ick acid, I know it came from an ate. And if it was an us acid, I know it came from an ite. That's the first thing you have to do, because that's going to establish what your anion is. So how do you get the number of hydrogens you put with that anion? Well, you look at the charge. Remember, a hydrogen ion is an H plus, a one positive. So depending on what the charge is of your anion, it's going to tell you exactly how many 
hydrogens you need. So a minus one anion would need one hydrogen. A minus two anion would need two. A three minus anion would need three hydrogens. So that's basically how it works. So if we had carbonate, that's CO3 two minus, we would need two hydrogens, two H plus ones, to balance that out. So let's say we have chloric acid. Let's apply the idea here. Remember, first we need to translate the anion. So it's an ic acid. That means it came from eight. So that means I need to look up chlorate and see what its formula and charge is. And whatever its charge is, I'm going to add that many hydrogens. Well, chlorate is ClO3 minus, just a negative one. So that means I need one hydrogen to put with a ClO3. So that's how we find the names and formulas of acids. It's based upon the anion that's in the acid. Now, what's a way to remember this? Well, this was a... Uh, a method that I hadn't seen before, Hananiga, when we had a new teacher come in. And Mr. Topalovich had said that, you know, I've got a way to think about this. When you bite gum, it's delicious, so I eat us. Remember, you don't eat the gum and swallow it. What you're supposed to do is chew it. So doing it right, when you bite gum, it's delicious. But if I ate it, that'd be icky. And then how do we come up with something with I'd? So I thought about because her saying basically just had those first two things. So I thought about, okay, well, what can I look at that would tie I'd? So, but if I'd drink hydraulic fluid, I'd be dead. Hydraulic fluid is typically a toxic poisonous substance. So hydroic, I'd. So thinking of this rhyme, it may help you keep straight on the test what comes from what. So bite gum, it's delicious. But if I ate it, it'd be icky. And if I'd drink hydraulic fluid, the hydroic, I'd be dead. Okay, let's go through and practice some of these. So first, looking at formulas. Well, first thing we have to do is establish what the anion is. So HF, the anion is F minus, which is fluoride. So what would the name be? Well, I'd, remember that's hydroic. So we would call this, oops, I guess I animated it differently here. So let's first go down and look at the anions in each one. So H3PO4, I'm sorry, H3P, well, P would be, phosphide and remember um, this is one that's not on the back so that means we've got to look at the front to see what it is so p is just a plain p and it's three away from the intersomal gas so this is going to be a three minus that's going to become important um, if we were going in the opposite direction and that's why it's got three h's with it next one h2so4 well that's sulfate so3 that's sulfite cn minus that's cyanide and crl4 minus that would be chromate so the first thing you need to do is establish, okay, what is our anion? Because these endings are going to determine how we name. Remember, I'd, like fluoride, that becomes a hydroic. So hydrofluoric. Phosphide, that's another I'd. So it's going to become hydrophos. Remember, P things, we make it phosphor. But if you called it hydrophosphic, I'd let it slide. Next one, eight. Well, this one's different. Remember, eight, if I ate gum, it's icky. So eight would give me ick. And this is another one, the S compounds, they're sulfur, not sulf. And sulfite then, it is us. If I bite gum, it's delicious. Sulf sulfurous acid. Cyanide, another I, so that's got to be a hydroic. So hydrocyanic acid. And then chlor chromate, the bottom one here, well, eight, remember, that would be ick. So it becomes chromic acid. Now, Looking at some formulas. Well, we still need to do the first, the same thing. We still need to think, or think, start by thinking out, okay, what is the anion that's in there? Hydroiodic. So I see IO. That's got to be iodide. So I minus is my anion in there. Acetic acid. Acetic. So acetate. Acetate is C2H3O2. Carbonic acid. Well, it came from eight, so I'm looking up carbonate. That's CO3, 2 minus. Phosphoric acid, it came from 8. So that would be phosphate, which when I looked that up is PO4, 3 minus. And then hydrobromic, well, hydroic means it comes from an ide, so this would be bromide, which would be Br minus. Now, finding formulas are actually a lot quicker and easier, because remember, once I've got my anion, the charge is going to tell me how many hydrogens I stick on the beginning. So I minus, that's 1. C2H3O2 minus, well, there's a lot of stuff there, but it's still just a minus one, so put on one hydrogen. The next one, CO3 two minus, that's a two minus, so I need two positive ones, that means I need two H's. 
and then PO4 3 minus. Now I need three H's to go at the beginning. And then last BR minus, that's just another minus one. That means only one H. So those would be my formulas. And don't worry too much about you know identifying it as aqueous or not. Um, sometimes you'll see that, sometimes you won't. Because remember, it's when these get thrown in water that they're functioning as acids. And that's a review of acids, names, and formulas. I hope that helps.